Hey what's going on guys, Chris here, and today's video is going to be focusing on some of my favourite medic weapons in Battlefield 1 that I'd probably consider to be the best, at least for me. There's lots of guns in Battlefield 1 that are available to pick from, and although I pretty much tend to skip between them all depending on the map, tactics and just my general mood, some of them are more likely to get picked more than others, because I think they're either slightly more effective, fit in with my playstyles more so, or I just generally like them a bit more than some of the others. So these are my top 6 medic weapons in Battlefield 1. So anyway, at number 6 is the Mondragon Rifle, a slow firing but still relatively powerful semi-automatic weapon that functions as a fairly reliable mid to long ranged gun. It's one of the few medic guns that can kill in just 3 shots over all distances, like both subslider rifles and the General Liu, giving the weapon some of the fastest kill times in the whole medic class at long range. And the fact that it's got a higher than average muzzle velocity of 800 meters per second means that its bullets are going to travel through the air fairly quickly, at a similar kind of speed to a lot of the scout's bolt action rifles. These factors really help with the gun's ease of use when you're dealing with enemies running around far away, as the medic rifles that deal less range damage and have a lower bullet velocity are not only going to take an extra round to kill over longer distances, but you usually need to lead a moving target a bit more than normal, which can often make them trickier things to use, so you'll probably be more likely to miss shots, therefore increasing kill times even further, which is never a good thing, especially when you're under fire with a load of bullets flying in your direction. As a competitive offensive rifle for playing closer to all the action, the Mondragon perhaps isn't really the best thing in the world. I mean, it's not a terrible gun to have equipped, though it's just not going to drop targets very quickly due to it only shooting at 257 RPM, so a little bit slower than a lot of the others. Is this a massive flaw in the Mondragon's usability? Not really, because so long as you take this limitation into account and use the rifle with a passive aggressive mindset, or in other words, not race around in close quarters thinking that you're Rambo, then you'll be able to take advantage of what the Mondragon does well. The gun's recoil isn't really the most accurate or controllable in the game, meaning it usually performs better when you pace your shots out by firing slower, and line up each individual shot properly to make it land on target, as opposed to just spamming the trigger to reach the weapon's maximum fire rate. The Mondragon rifle's got less recoil than the Selbstlader M1916, which is a fairly similar weapon in general comparison, so it typically feels like a more accurate choice to pick, and although it doesn't hold a tremendous amount of ammo, 10 rounds is usually enough to take down a few enemies and get the job done. Although it holds less bullets than the M1916's hefty magazine, it's practically doubled the Selbstlader 1906's, which trades ammo capacity in favour for more precision. So this puts the Mondragon rifle somewhere between the two, in terms of balance between ammo count and accuracy. All variants are quite useful in their own separate ways, but I'm a big fan of the Mondragon Storm's lower recoil pattern, making the Storm variant my favourite one of the pack. It reduces the weapon's fairly bounty kick down, allowing you to fire at the rifle's maximum rate more reliably, all whilst being able to remain on target a bit easier, turning a gun with a fairly moderate amount of recoil into one of the more accurate choices in the whole class. At number 5 is the Federov Avtomat, which was a bit of a curveball when it was first thrown into Battlefield 1, being a medic rifle that functioned in an almost entirely different way to the other weapons on offer in the class, built around slow firing self loaded rifles. In a way, the Fedorov sometimes seems to bridge the gap between the Assault's SMGs and the Medic weapons, as it deals less damage than the semi-automatic rifles, yet has more range than the SMGs, though it shoots a bit slower than most of said SMGs, but fires quicker than the semi-automatic rifles, putting the Fedorov Avtomat somewhere in the middle. Despite having that 450 RPM fire rate, the gun still doesn't really have any outstanding kill times though, like you'd probably assume. In fact, it's one of the slowest killing weapons in the entire class beyond 40 meters generally making it a more suitable gun for closer range fights, where you'll be able to take people down in less bullets. The big reason why the Fedorov is such an effective gun though, isn't its ability to quickly or even reliably kill in close range gunfights, but it's the fact that it can keep those bullets flying at such a steady pace. So if a bullet or two misses, which is most likely going to happen as you play, it's going to be far less problematic than if you were using one of the other slower shooting medic rifles, due to you having plenty of ammo at your disposal in those chunky 26 round box magazines and due to those rounds getting fired at a quicker pace, basically acting like a slow firing assault weapon with a bit more range. The recoil of the gun might sometimes seem a little bit jumpy and unpredictable, but it's not really all that bad, actually having some of the lowest horizontal and vertical figures in the whole class. Though because you're firing in a fully automatic setting, this makes the recoil seem more noticeable, as you're not pacing individual shots out from one another, but you're letting the bullets flow out automatically instead as you hold down the trigger. Along with being effective within shorter sightlines, it can also cater for medium range battles quite well too, 
as you can tap and burst fire the Federer of Optimat to keep it under control more easily, with it also sharing the same first shot multiplier of one times that the other medic rifles all seem to use, which is a very generous stat for an automatic gun to have, as most of the other full auto weapons in the game are penalised, at least a little bit, when it comes to that extra first shot recoil. So this is a pretty big bonus that can boost the gun's effectiveness when you take advantage of it against opponents further away, nicely expanding its ease of use further than you'd probably think. But my choice at number 4 is the M1907SL, which is a surprisingly effective close to mid-range rifle that fits in pretty well with some aggressive tactics. The gun can kill in 3 bullets right the way out to 38 meters, though the damage of the 1907 is prone to dropping off a little bit more than other rifles, with it starting off being quite high up close, but lowering more so over distance, equating to a 5 bullet kill beyond 54 meters, which is less than ideal, and gives the gun some fairly poor kill times for range fights. A lower than average muzzle velocity is also going to make shots harder to land on targets over distance, and the M1907 also has some pretty spicy recoil figures, with its horizontal kick being the second most violent in the whole class, impacting accuracy and making the weapon a bit of a trickier thing to control, especially at those further distances where we've already established that the gun is generally going to be less effective. So it's safe to say that the M1907SL does have its fair share of flaws that mainly impede its use for long range battles. But apart from it essentially sucking as a range rifle, it functions as a much better and more reliable gun for frontline use, where you're more likely to come across multiple enemy players that need putting down. If you're at a contested objective point with a few opponents nearby, then the M1907SL is a decent weapon to have for taking them all on, as it not only performs at its best within those shorter ranges, dealing a fairly strong amount of damage per bullet, but you've also got plenty of those bullets to blast out at your disposal, with the M1907 holding a generous 21 rounds at a time. Should you eventually run out of ammo in the middle of a chaotic scenario, then not to worry, because those box magazines can be swapped over at some of the quickest speeds in the whole class, with tactical reloads just taking over 2 seconds to perform, very swift indeed. It doesn't really matter if you're missing a few shots during your time using the M1907, as you've got loads more to back you up and keep you going through the fight, with ammunition being less of a necessity and something you rarely need to think about as you play. For this reason, the M1907 can often seem a bit more spam fire friendly, where you don't need to take ammo into account quite as much, and instead you can let your trigger finger run wild, popping shots at multiple targets one after the other without pausing, or at least pausing for very long, to switch those mags over, which is one of the main reasons why I find it to be such an effective weapon to wield for offensive play. I think that all three variants are useful in their own ways, though I do generally gravitate towards the factory and trench variants a bit more so as the trench's lower hip fire spread goes hand in hand with close quarter use, where the gun stands out the most, and the factory's faster recoil decrease rate helps the rifle to be a tad more reliable for gunfights over medium ranges, due to its sights resetting quicker, making consecutive shots easier to line up and land on target effectively. Coming in at number 3 is the Autoloading 8 a gun which actually comes in two versions that both play out in fairly different ways, the .35 variant and the weaker but more spammable 2.5 extended. I actually like them all equally, and probably use both the .35 and .25 variants about as much as each other, hence why I've clubbed them together in this section, as although they both cater for different playstyles and, in a way, function like almost completely different guns, they both do a great job when used in more of an offensive manner, and are easily some of the most aggressive medic rifles in the whole class which is one of the main reasons why I like them a hell of a lot. There's quite a lot of big differences between the .35 and .25 variants, apart from the rate of fire, as they're all going to shoot at 360 RPM, which is a quicker rate to almost all of the other medic rifles, so this is going to reflect on those kill times and speed them up. The .35 variants are short to mid-range skill cannons that can wipe players out faster than almost everything else the medic class has to offer up to 70 meters giving them some huge potential in mid-range gunfights and making them very competitive guns when it comes to kill times. Of course, the main issue you're going to come across is the sheer lack of ammo that the weapons can contain at any given time, as 5 rounds is only enough to reliably secure one kill, making the .35 variants awesome rifles for taking on players one at a time, but less so when you become outnumbered. For this reason, it can often be a tricky weapon to roll with, but so long as you're prepared to avoid incoming fire by diving behind cover and between reloads, top the magazine up with ammo after every skirmish, and of course, use your sidearm when you're completely vulnerable, then the autoloading 8.35 can be a really bloody effective gun, 
and when you compare it to some of the other weapons that have small ammo capacities in the game, the auto-loading 8.35 is a really deadly one that can outshoot the likes of the Selbstlader 1906 in a close to medium range gunfight, and even give the assault weapons a run for their money in CQC. The 2.5 extended variant helps to solve the auto-loading 8.35's low ammo capacity problem by giving you a bigger 16 round magazine, at the trade-off of firing a weaker cartridge to help balance things out. So you can take down multiple enemies without having to reload every 5 seconds, and in turn this makes it a bit more dependable, but not quite as dangerous. The .25 extended can still take players down in 3 shots up close like the other variants, but it's not going to deal as much damage over distance, with damage dropping off sooner, and with it dropping even further to lower values, equating to more bullets to kill. All three variants are really accurate, which makes that faster fire rate much easier to take advantage of, though I guess the .25 extended is a slightly better short range weapon because of its ability to handle with heated situations in CQC quite well. Whereas the .35 variants are a bit more suitable for mid range fights, due to them being stronger further away, but more likely to leave you in a vulnerable position in between kills. So I tend to use the different variants accordingly, depending on what kind of range I want to play at the most in a match. In second place is the Seragotti, a very dependable rifle that can cater for almost all situations fairly well. It pretty much ticks all the right boxes for being a solid well rounded gun, as it not only performs well across medium ranges, but it can also drop targets reasonably quickly up close too. Firing at the same rate as the Selbstlader 1906, General Liu rifle, and the M1907SL by shooting at the speed of 300 RPM, beating quite a few of the other weapons in the medic class when it comes to its rate of fire. Unfortunately for the Sabrigotti, its free bullet kill only lasts up to 54 meters, but despite taking an extra shot to kill from here than a few of the other rifles, the gun's kill times are still decent nevertheless, as the slower rate of fire of the longer range rifles slightly counters their higher damage output to a certain degree. Not quite enough for the Sabrigotti to beat them in long distance showdowns, with it taking that extra fourth round to kill, but still enough to make it seem fairly effective over longer distances without it taking too long to put someone down, often making the Sabrigotti a faster killing range weapon than almost all of the other medic guns that take four or more bullets to put players down further away. One of the things that really complements its well roundedness is the fact that it holds 10 shots at a time, which probably doesn't seem like a hell of a lot of ammo to go nuts with but normally it's plenty to take care of a few enemies and deal with whatever situation you happen to get thrown into, as you're far less likely to get caught out holding twice as many rounds as something like the auto-loading 8.35 or the Selbstlader 1906, meaning you don't have to worry quite as much about missing a shot or two, as you'll usually have enough left over to see you through a fight fine enough. I guess the Seirigotti isn't exactly the most accurate thing in the game, especially with it having a horizontal value of 0.4, which is a tad higher than a few of the others, but when you're aiming at players within those closer proximities, it's not quite enough to cause your shots to fly off target or create any significant problems. The only time I ever really find the recoil to be a bit more of an issue is when I'm shooting the gun quickly at an enemy far away, as I'm forced to pay shots out a little bit more to control that kick and remain on target. But with the Sabrigotti being a gun more designed for medium range firefights and less so for long distance battles, this never really proves to be a massive problem. It just means that I might find it a bit trickier to take people down far away quickly, which isn't really a thing this Arigotti is supposed to do effectively anyway. So my number one medic weapon, which is actually one of my favourite guns in the whole game, is the RSC 1917, a high damage rifle that packs a much bigger punch than the others, at the trade off of having a heavier recoil pattern and shooting a little bit slower. The most obvious thing to point out about the RSE 1917 that makes it so bloody brilliant is the fact that in most gunfights, you're going to be able to drop your opponent in just two shots. So despite the rifle firing slower than pretty much everything else in its class, it kills a lot quicker than everything else in the class too. Well, out to the range of about 70 meters anyway, where the gun's damage drops off to a free bullet kill, making it a far less effective weapon for long distance takedowns. But these crappy ranged kill times hardly ever become much of an issue as most of the players you're likely to come up against in the game are going to be within the RSE's two hit kill range, which spans over all those close to mid distances and even slightly beyond, making it one of the most competitive choices for taking down other players that really reward you for landing shots on target. The gun only holds 6 rounds per reload, which would usually seem like a bit of a limited amount for a self loading rifle to carry, but because the RSE typically kills 2-3 to three enemies per clip, and with those clip reloads not taking too much of your time to perform, it's not very often that you'll run out of ammo in a gunfight, especially when you compare it to the likes of the Selbstlader 1906 and the auto-loading 
which can only normally kill one enemy at a time with a fully loaded magazine. I guess the biggest drawback to using the RSC 1917 is mainly down to it having the most erratic recoil pattern of the bunch, kicking vertically and horizontally even more than everything else, by quite a large margin. But that's not to say the rifle's an ineffective or even difficult weapon to use, as once you learn to pace shots out and manage that recoil when engaging an opponent that's a bit further away, you can effectively tame the beast and overcome the ROC's biggest negative factor, allowing you to master the gun's mechanics and take advantage of that brutal mid-range stopping power. Even the SMG wield and assault players can often fall victim to those vicious two-hit kill wipeouts in close quarters. You can essentially beat them at their own game, within their own short-range territory, so long as you're quick enough to the trigger. And because the RSC 1917 is such a dangerous weapon, it can do some pretty amazing things that the other medic rifles just simply can't do. Although I found both variants to be decent options, I generally prefer the factory variant a bit more so, due to it having a faster recoil recovery rate, which helps to counter that jumpy recoil further and make it easier to line up consecutive shots and attack quicker, with those iron sights snapping back to their original firing position faster. Definitely a good thing for a higher recoil weapon to have, which makes it feel a bit more usable over those medium distances and for taking on players quicker and more reliably. So those are pretty much the medic rifles I'd consider to be the best, or at least my favourites. But do take into account that all the guns in the game have their own advantages and disadvantages, and some are obviously going to be better at doing some things more than others. There is no right or wrong answer when it comes to best weapons, as it's all down to opinions, personal preference, and whether or not a specific gun fits into your playstyle more. So let me know down in the comments what your favourite medic rifles are in Battlefield 1, and subscribe for lots of other videos coming out very soon. Take it easy folks, and I'll see you in the next episode.